let's go for face lot loop. Anyway, we have two kind of lot loops. Uh, first of all, we would like to lock the face, and the other one, uh, we would like to lock the delay. So PLDL actually are the most important tool for lock loop. Anyway, the hmm, operation principle is quite similar to each other, and to be honest, PLL is harder to understand than DLL. So I would like to spend the rest of the time uh, focusing on PLL design and uh, operation principle. Why we need that kind of face lock loop? Anyway, hmm. for example, our mobile phones, I think it has a lot of PLLs inside. Yeah, and not, not only PLLs, but also ABC, DAC, a lot of them. Yeah. If you remove PLL, DLL, uh, ADC, or DAC, I don't think any kind of uh, smart, smart device can be functional. No way. Yeah, right now, maybe even for our electric fan, if that is uh, some kind of DC instead of AC fan, I think they install some kind of uh, PLL inside. PLL, DLL, because uh, we need to control the uh, the fan speed, the rotation speed. But how? Through the help of PLL. That is, PLL, DLL, uh, that is the uh, most convenient. So for PLL, actually, uh, we have quite many important applications. Uh, from the beginning, jitter suppression, I will explain why. Okay, and then a uh, skill reduction, yeah, to hopefully make uh, all those data and the clock synchronized to each other, hopefully, yeah. But um, to be honest, if you have parallel communication, actually you cannot make it. I, I mean, because right now the communication speed is really high. So for parallel ones, forget about it. Uh, the hard limit uh, to my memory, maybe, uh, it's only six, 66 megahertz, no higher than that. After that, for especially gigahertz, tens of gigahertz uh, operation, you need to change your mind from parallel to serial communication. That means what? For each nine or each pair of nines, we can only transmit data bit by bit instead of byte by byte of the others. Forget about it. It doesn't make any sense right now, okay? But, but how to make it for such kind of very high frequency serial communication? Yep, PRL or DRL, that is the key. And also uh, frequency synthesizer, as I mentioned, yeah, for our mobile phone, we have a lot of oscillation frequencies required by the mobile system. Okay, how to achieve that? In the past, we have a lot of crystals. Wow, it means it's really bulky. Very heavy and very expensive. But right now, through the help of PLL, maybe we have only a few crystals, not a single one that is too hard. Uh, in your mobile phone, you can Google maybe each mobile phone needs around five or something. Yeah, crystals. But anyway, the frequencies, uh, the number of frequencies required is much, much more than that. All right. So who can help you to create multiple frequencies from a single one? PLL. That is the most. PLL is possible, but uh, with uh, many kind of limitations. But uh, anyway, PLL is uh, usually much uh, flexible, much better, but harder to understand, okay, I mean, uh, than PLL. And then clock recovery, that is what I say uh, for serial communication. Right now we forget about the uh, parallel one, that is almost mission impossible. Yeah, more than 10 or 15 years ago, I Google online and show you all of this. Right now, much, much more than this, okay, all of all those I showed on the screen need PR. Okay? Wow, many kind of applications. Yeah, anyway. Ooh.
so sweet. Oh, nice one. <laughs> anyway, allow me to show you some of the typical wireless receiver application. Receiver transmitter about the same, okay? Similar to each other. Yeah, you can see. Uh, from the antenna, we receive the RF signal, gigahertz, or at least hundreds of gigahertz. Uh, to my memory, maybe uh, the minimum, maybe uh, 700 megahertz or something. Seven, eight, nine hundred, one point something, two point something. Uh, in the future, I think uh, maybe five gigahertz, seven gigahertz, all of them uh, will be accessible by our mobile phones. Yeah, right now we have 4G, right? And uh, uh, look into the near future, hopefully 5G. But how successful, nobody knows, because uh, South Korean and uh, uh, they have some kind of test site uh, in their own country. Yeah, anyway, uh, the outcome is really awful. <laughs> With 5G, actually the Average communi communication speed is not higher than 4G, but it's really hard to connect to 5G. Here now, it is said that Huawei is the most successful company on Earth for 5G, but uh, you, 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 you can guess uh, there are always some kind of uh, back doors uh, connect uh, our devices back to China. Yeah, uh, yesterday I saw a very interesting news, uh, Facebook, finally admitted that they cooperated with Huawei for more than four or five years. It means that uh, all our activities on Facebook actually are monitored by Huawei. Okay, so don't say anything back to China. Otherwise, if you uh, go to China or even Hong Kong in, in the future, you will be captured and sent to, uh, sent to China. How much you need to be very careful because there is a big uh, the so-called intensive camp in Xinjiang, right? All Muslims are <laughs> keep there. More than one million. That is ridiculous. Anyway, yeah. But, but uh, I, I don't care about five, uh, 4G, 5G, 6G. Anyway, you can see from the IF side, uh, through the antenna, we get the very weak signal about microvolt. So we need uh, to filter first. Uh, that is the so-called so -called image rejection filter. But what is that? Ah. Anyway, the purpose is to prevent um, the uh, channels overlap. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I have the channel here. Uh, you have the, oh, so sorry, channel here, channel there. Anyway, if you don't do such kind of uh, image rejection filtering, yeah, there will be overlap according to sound conversion, blah, 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 okay? Anyway, uh, that is from telecommunication, forget about it. Uh, I'm, I'm not your communication professor. Anyway, after that, we need to amplify the signal because it's too weak, but we need to have that kind of very low noise amplifier. Why? Because uh, if the noise of yourself is too high, then after amplification, your noise will be higher than <laughs> the signal. It doesn't make any sense, okay? So we strongly require that kind of LNA. But after, oh, oh so, 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 LN, LNA, right? And then the improved version, LNB, LNC, LN, uh, who cares what? <laughs> anyway, briefly, they are all LNA. That's it, okay? And then uh, we need to do down conversion because Again, for our human eyes, human ears, we can only process, uh, how can I say, uh, base band. Okay, that is the so-called base band signal. Yeah, for audio, again, 20 kilohertz. For video, 6 megahertz, that's it. Okay, uh, because humankind, for such kind of sense, we have much less sense than animals. Yeah, the eagles, the tigers, they have much better sense than us. Okay, so they can hear something we cannot hear. They can see something we cannot, we cannot see. But anyway, anyway, uh, all those are for humankind. Okay, not for animals. So we focus on this very much. 
and it means from gigahertz all the way down to kilo or megahertz. Can we make it? Yeah, we have the so-called zero mid-band uh, receiver, but the sensitivity is really awful. So to enhance the sensitivity, usually we convert, we now convert the high frequency signal to mid-band signal and then to base band. We need the help of mid-band. Why? Yeah, to enhance the sensitivity. It, it means what? Even the input signal becomes very small, we, sh we can still pick up them, yeah, and to get the final audio video of uh, your, your, your text, your digital content. Yeah, all the message you send, all the image you send, actually uh, they are in digital format. Okay, yeah, video audio the same. But through the help of deck, uh, we can see them, we can hear them, blah, blah, blah. Okay, to make more sense for you, uh, for example, maybe uh, for daily lives, humankind right now uh, still listen to uh, FM radio, AM radio. Okay, so for FM, the mid band signal is ten point uh, seven megahertz. Okay, that's it. It is fixed. So from the mid band to base band, you need to generate. 10.7 megahertz. Okay, because by multiplication, yeah, we will get the summation and difference. Okay, uh, what what I'm talking about is what you learned already, maybe from your senior high in mathematics. If you have sine or cosine, I don't care. Okay, yeah, sine, uh, for example, sine omega one t sine omega 2t blah, blah 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 by multiplication you will get uh, some kind of omega 1 plus omega 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 okay okay and we will filter out the high frequency one we only get the difference that's the secret yeah, no, no, that, that is the, yeah, everybody knows secret so from the beginning from the RF to mid band hmm, you need the first we call it low core oscillation local means what here is local at your side okay and what is the remote base uh, base station i mean according to the definition of a mobile phone okay for users we need to generate some sig signal locally i mean in your mobile phones all right and the remote side yeah to the base station so for such kind of local oscillator we need to generate for example if uh, that is uh, ICRT. ICRT, uh, some kind of ch uh, English, the first antenna is still the, m the most successful English RF radio in Taiwan. Okay? 100.7 megahertz to the mid band. Okay? So the difference is how much? 90, right? So it needs to generate 90 megahertz for the high frequency to mid band. Uh, we call it mixer. Mixer, in theory, is some kind of analog multiplier, okay, multiplication, okay, to generate the summation, the difference of two frequencies. That is what we want. And we filter out the highest one. We only get the difference instead of the summation. So we need another low-pass filtering or band-pass to get the mid-band. And after we get the mid-band, we need to another local oscillator to generate in phase and in phase and out of phase. Out of phase means what? Quadruple, quadruple, right? Ninety degree. So one is sine, the other one is cosine. Oh, that is another very important secret about telecommunication. Yeah, because for serial communication, never mind wild communication or wireless communication under the same situation in the past you can only transmit one bit one bit of the data right but luckily enough sine and the cosine there is 90 degrees in difference 90 degrees means what they are orthogonal they are perpendicular to each other 
Okay, if you multiply sine by cosine, after low pass filtering, you get zero. <laughs> okay, so in this way, we have sine, we have cosine. So, yeah, uh, during maturation or dematuration, sine multiplied by sine, cosine multi multiplied by cosine, we can get two bits. Right? But sine by cosine, cosine by sine, you get zero. Congratulations. So, we can transmit two bit stream simultaneously with the same frequency on the same line. Okay? That's it. One with sine, the other one with cosine. Bingo. That is our secret. To double the bit per second, we can achieve for serial communication. That is really, really important, especially to the air. Maybe for wild communication, we care nothing about this because uh, we have quite many kinds of wires, uh, fiber, optical fiber, right? A car, uh, couple, cable, blah, blah, we have a lot of that. So we don't, we, we, we don't worry about this. But to the air, all of you share the same frequency band. So we need to maximize the efficiency of that, of that kind of RF transmission. So anyway, anyhow, for in-phase and out-of-phase 30 degrees, uh, 90 degrees in difference, we can transmit two data. Yeah, two bit stream, chuan liu, okay? But how to recover it? Uh -huh. We need to regenerate zero degree, in phase, 90 degree, yeah, out of phase. For such kind of, again, we call it mixer. Mixer, analog, multiplier, cheng fa qi, let be cheng fa qi. Yeah, after that, again, we filled up the high frequency one to get the base band. Yeah, because I told you already, uh, again, from ICRT, right? Then 90 megahertz here, we get mid band, uh, 10.7 megahertz. And this, for this local oscillation, we generate the same frequency, but one is in sine, the other one is in cosine. And after multiplication, 10.7 minus 10.7 means zero, right? Yeah, so we get the base band signal here and there. But two streams, right? So you need to combine both of them to get the final data. So we need uh, DSP, digital signal processing, blah, blah. Not, not only that, but also through the air, we two major, uh, the other major issues. One is encryption, Xiaomi. The other one is compression, Yasuo. Okay, to maximize the efficiency, but also, yeah, we wouldn't like our phones to be tapped. Yeah, the other one, yeah, turn on uh, uh, his, home, his phone or her phone, then listen to what you are talking about. It's not the same thing with encryption. Yeah, to, uh, but, but according to Huawei, <laughs> they can steal almost everything. Uh, and this, this uh, is uh, one of the reasons why Donald Trump is really unhappy about this. Some is true, some is not true. But overall, yeah, under the big stress from uh, Donald Trump, uh, Huawei says, yesterday he says, maybe 30% to 40% off <laughs> in next two years, okay? I mean, for the overall revenue. Yeah, so hopefully maybe it will go for bankruptcy. Haha, <laughs> okay, I forget about it, yeah. If I say this on Facebook, then <laughs> I cannot go to China. Anyway. This is uh, also a very good example for you, as I mentioned, how to control the speed here, the motor, okay? Uh, to the rotor of the motor, uh, we have a lot of uh, sensors or what, okay? Optical sensor, magnetic sensor, a lot of them, yeah. So during rotation, uh, they can generate, ah, for example, a disc, a metal disc, a metal pan attached yeah, to the rotor, okay? And then we have a lot of holes. Yeah, that is a lot of small holes, okay? And we have laser beam. 
to shoot it. So during rotation, the laser beam will be on off because it is rotate. It is rotate, right? If the laser beam goes through the hole, you will get the signal. And uh, in between, the signal will be off. So you will get a lot of on off, on off, blah, blah, blah. And then we can synchronize the sensor output to your reference frequency. That's it. Face lock loop. Okay, to lock the face, you can get, if you go to the uh, the gym, go to the yard, uh, rate to race with the other. Oh, you mentioned power Yeah, yeah, to run, okay? Yeah, each cycle means one period for oscillation. If you would like to lock the face, what does it mean? The speed needs to be the same, right? <laughs> if the speed, unless because, uh, for example, if you are slower than for each, Oscillation, the difference will become bigger. It doesn't make any sense. So to face the to lock the face, it means the oscillation frequency should be exactly the same. Got it? So the output frequency should lock to the reference frequency. So if you vary the reference frequency, then the rotation speed needs to be changed under the closed loop control. It is also a negative feedback to stabilize the operation, wow, okay? So we have a lot of such kind of PIL for your CD player, for your electric fans, DC fans, that is what I mean, okay? And the overall power consumption, a power saving for DC fan compared to AC fan, for low speed, right now, more than, not right now, years ago, it's already more than 95% power saving, wow, wow. Okay, and how about the maximum speed? Around 40 to 50 percent in power saving. So, please save our Mother Earth by using DC fans instead of AC fans. For any kind of mo motors, compressors in your air conditioner, they had better to be a DC instead of AC. AC is really, really power wasting. Okay, let's go further. Wow, this is some kind of Stop carry okay, I forget about it. I would like to tell you, yeah, the uh, the main component is PIL. Without PIL, we cannot make it. All right. So what is PIL? Uh, in in theory, we only need two. Okay, but in practice, we need the uh, uh, low pass filtering. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Uh, in practice, there are three major components. One is face detector. Uh, again, just like you race, you do racing with each other on the gym yard. Okay, yeah, you go, you run. Yeah. Uh, for example, oh, because there is no lady here, so you can say, hey, there's a beautiful lady in the yard. You need <laughs> You would like to, how can I say, yeah, to lock her, right? Yeah. Uh, at, uh, uh, in a safe distance, if you just run side by side. It, it is some kind of very annoying, right? <laughs> you run in this way, <laughs> then the lady or, uh, will either stop or, or run faster. Anyway, that is uh, so. Usually, we keep a safe distance for watching. Okay, so in this way, right? You need to lock the lady. So how to lock? I, I mean, under the yard, right? There is a lady, right? And there is a boy. How to lock her, right? Yeah, we need such kind of face detector. Keep a safe distance, a fixed, yeah, above the fixed distance, a fixed face, okay? So our eyes will be similar to the face detector, all right? So if the lady say, oh, somebody uh, would like to annoy me, so she runs faster according to the boy's eyes, <laughs> he needs to speed up, okay? So the output of the face detector the long, the larger phase means that it needs to increase the output voltage. Okay, so hopefully the phase difference, okay, and the voltage for output will be proportional to each other. The larger phase, the more voltage. For what? Actually, we have the so-called voltage controlled oscillator. That is the first version, VCO, voltage controlled oscillator. It means what? Usually the larger voltage, the higher operation frequency, right? So the lady 
wrong pastor according to our eyes. We do the wrong pastor, so we need to, uh, yeah, how, how can I say? <laughs> yeah, anyway, you need to energize up your body. Hey, wrong pastor, okay? Yeah, so your leg, bah, 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 bah. that is uh, something very similar to oscillator. Periodically, okay, to catch up with the lady. Okay, that's it. Uh, for example, I give the lady the oh, Okay, forget about it. I would like to stop. So she slows down Ooh, to your back, right? So you <laughs> slow down because so oh, the lady is behind you. So you need to slow down also. Yeah, so you are here right now, but you need to slow down, yeah, to generate less upper voltage, yeah, to lower the up, uh, the oscillation frequency. That's it. That's it. Okay. Anyway, why we need such kind of loop filter in between later? I will explain. What? Anyway, phase detector behaves like some kind of error amplifier. The error means what? The phase difference. In theory, if you would like to lock the output to the input, usually in theory or from the beginning, engineers would like the so-called lock. Means what? No phase difference. Not only no difference in oscillation frequencies, but also zero phase error. <laughs> okay? And it means the phase between your input and output should be zero. Th that but that is only in theory. In practice, two major Two major concerns, either zero or 90 degree. Why? Because I told you already, for I phase, for I signal and the Q signal. Yeah, I or Q. So zero or 90 degree will be the best among all of them. And how about 30, 45? Right. All of them are not so good. All right? Anyway. Before my formal explanation to the operation principle of phase lock loops, uh, allow me to show you some kind of uh, history to honor the creators. Okay, first of all, this is the idea, not implementation, only the idea was presented in 1932. Whoa, right now we are here, right? Almost one century ago, <laughs> almost, not exactly. Wow, by this guy, in, uh -huh, see, coherent communication. Here is really important for communication system. Yeah, but this is only idea, what is the uh, real implementation? Wow, <laughs> almost 30 years later, humankind made something instead of nothing. Wow, so you can see. The evolution of new technology is really slow. I mean, from the very beginning, okay? In 1965, humankind implemented the first PRL, purely analog. It means, it means uh, all the blocks there, well, well, all of them in analog domain, okay? And then, five years later, humankind created the first digital PRL. But don't be fooled, all right? And that is only some kind of uh, names uh, to differentiate this from that. If we don't say anything, it means analog PRL. Everything, every function blocks is in analog domain. But what is the definition for digital PRL? The phase detector should be in digital domain. That's it, okay? So you go back. This one in digital domain, and all the others still in analog domain, we call it digital PRL. Okay, but if you ask me, hey, all those are in digital domain, then we call it fully digital. Okay, yeah, that is uh, uh, interesting, but uh, a little bit confusing naming, okay? Anyway, what is the definition for digital? It means what? At least, oh, okay, not at least. The input and the output should be in digital, okay? And it means what? They only accept one or zero, that's it. Never mind for input or output, okay? Only two levels. That is the definition for digital circuit. 
And then finally, we go for all dystopia, you know, everything in digital domain. Yeah, but, but uh, we have VCO, right? Voltage controlled oscillator, they have, I mean, in digital domain, numerical controlled, numerically controlled oscillator. Okay? Anyway. And then, even by software, wow, you s this does signal processing, DSP, it's totally possible. All right. Since 90, 1990s, most, even to you now, most of the PIO use charge pump. Like I explained how to charge pump. Okay. For the future, only two possibilities. Either digitally assisted, yeah, many in analog domain, but uh, with the help of digital circuit, uh, we can enhance the performance very much. For example, the lock time uh, to increase the lock time to uh, reduce the errors, blah, 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 all of that. Or fully digital, only two possibilities. But right now, I think uh, we still focus on this very much for fully digital one. What can I say? I cannot say it is impossible, but uh, it doesn't have, uh, how can I say, uh, too many real applications, to be honest. Okay, so right now we focus, we still focus very much on such kind of digitally assisted PIL. So before my uh, formal explanation, allow me to show you such kind of terminology, how to think, okay? So first of all, locking. Yeah, you need to lock the output phase to the input phase. I told you already, the frequencies need to be exactly the same. Okay, and then lock the phase. Lock range, and it means if the input here and output is close to your input, we can, within a very short period, push your input, input frequency to be exactly the same of your output frequency, uh, sorry, push your output frequency to be exactly the same of your input, and then lock the phase. We call it lock range, okay? Some of the structure with zero lock range, it means it can only lock the phase instead of frequency. That is really bad, okay? Yeah, anyway, if possible, we would like to have some kind of lock range. But anyway, if the output frequency is too much far away from your input, right then we have another one called capture range it means here and lock range here right if it is out of the lock range then we will try to pull push the output frequency into the lock range then locked i cannot say immediately but yeah the the settling time is much less so for pulling okay Capture, pulling or pushing, I don't care. Pulling at the viewpoint of input. I just pull the output into my capture, my, my, my lock range, then lock it, right? Yeah, so active or passive, 主动或被动. Uh, actively, we call it pulling. Uh, active, uh, passively, we call it pushing. When you're pushing the output frequency into the lock range of your input, that's it, okay? But if it is, so this is very slow, and this is very fast. Capture lock range, into lock range. To achieve locking is much faster than pull in. Okay. The formal process, it means pull in. So if the output frequency is in the capture range, but out of lock range, we need such kind of pull in, pull in process, and then lock it within lock range, okay? But if the output frequency is beyond capture range, then forget about it. You don't have any capability to push in and lock, no, no. Then let it be. And you will have some kind of free running uh, as he likes, okay? Yeah. That is so-called free running frequency. Oh, pull in here. Yeah, pull in time. So acquisition time for capturing actually is pull in time plus settling time. Settling time for lock range. 
Okay, and after that, lock. And after locking, you have face of step or face arrow. Okay, I mean for steady state. So you would like to run side by side with zero degrees, but sometimes it's not good, right? 90 degrees may be safer. I feel like, yeah. But for all the others, they are no good. If, if you told me after locking, you get 35, what does it mean? <laughs> 30, 15, 20, 55, all of them are nonsense, okay? Only two faces, lock, locked face, locked faces make sense. One is zero, the other one is 90 degrees for our applications. But usually we have zero degrees from the very beginning, okay? And then generate 90 degrees for the other faces. So again, this is some kind of PLO structure. Again, from the very beginning, you have phase, phase frequency detector, PFD, phase and frequency detector. Oh, just like your eyes. You lock the lady in front of you. Then you have charge pump, right? Just like you drive the car. You know, oh, the lady in front of you. Yeah, drive too fast. Then you need to speed it up, okay, with your leg. <laughs> speed up, more fuel for your car, and then the oscillator just like your engine. <laughs> Cycle operation, right? Yeah. But we have gears. See? <laughs> the first, the second, all the way to T or anyway. For, uh, right now it is, uh, that is the so-called Manually or automatic, manual or automatic transmission. The transmission system actually is controlled by gears. Usually from the smaller one from the engine to the larger one for the wheels, okay? Or your, uh, yeah, wheels, <laughs> we, we don't drive, usually we don't drive the wheels directly by the engine because if you can do it then I promise you yeah, for the uh, maximum speed the car will fly because it's too fast <laughs> okay yeah to protect the system to protect the wheels we need to slow it down how to slow it down from the engine to the wheel with such kind of conversion so the ratio for such kind of transmission system I mean from the small gear to the larger gear, right? Yeah, that is what we do with your transmission system, just like this. Okay? That's it. Uh, in PL, we call it, uh, okay, allow me to say, a divider. But usually for high frequency one, we don't call it divider, we call it pre scalar instead. Okay? Now, what is the difference, divider and prescaler? I can only say that prescaler means very high frequency divider. <laughs> okay, that's it. Yeah, but for divider, never mind. That is uh, even, how can I say, broadband name. Yeah, if you de decrease the input frequency to the output, we call it divider. I don't care for low, medium, or to very high frequency, I don't care. Overall, we call it divider. Anyway, anyhow. Okay, so this is the complete block diagram for our PLL. All right? Yeah, then after such kind of frequency divider, we locked your output frequency and output phase to your input. Got it? Got it? Okay? So in this way, yeah. If you turn the ratio up, okay, hmm, or the ratio down instead of up, okay, yeah, maybe you can see that is n to one, okay, yeah. So for such kind of transmission system, especially for manual one, it is also very interesting. Yeah, you 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 you, you change the transmission system. Uh, maybe from four to three to two to even one. It means what? The ratio is decreased. But you can guess, for
for the input frequency, you rate with each other, for example, with the same speed. miles or, or uh, kilometers, okay, per hour. With the same speed, you can see if you tune from four to three to one, the gear ratio will become smaller and smaller, right? So what does it mean? Yeah, it means to run much faster, okay? Oh, sorry, 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 the larger, so, sorry, sorry, sorry for that, okay? Yeah, all the way. Anyway, it means what? Even with the fixed input frequency, Again. Anyway, you can see to lock the phase here and there, the frequency needs to be exactly the same. I told you already, right? So it means the input frequency needs to be equal to your output divided by n. That's it. Okay. So the output frequency equals aha. Uh -huh, you can see input frequency by n. Wow. It means what? By changing the ratio you can change your output frequency even when you have exactly the same input. And that is the secret for your local oscillators in your mobile phone, okay? Again, with the same input frequency, usually from crystal, crystal oscillator, then we can change the ratio to get different frequencies. Got it? Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the secret for frequency synthesizer, okay, usually we don't change this, we change that, okay? Now through the help of divider or prescaler. So again, allow me to show you all of these, the complete flux diagram for PLL. But I didn't explain why we need such kind of loop filter, right? Yeah, I explain everything. That is your eye and that is your leg. No, 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 no. Uh, to uh, review, yeah, it's legs. To speed up, it means you get more fuel, more gas to your engine, right? And then the gears for transmission speed and blah, blah, blah. But what is the good loop filter can do for you? Very simple. For driving. You don't speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. No, that is too dangerous, too harmful for your engine, right? So usually if you are a very good driver to speed up, you will increase the fuel all the way to the maximum you need to achieve, okay? To slow down, we will release gradually. We don't, during driving, don't speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down, okay? It is no good for driving, no good for running faster, slower, faster, slower. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, automatically, we need to have such kind of low pass filtering. So, to increase the speed or to slow down the, or to decrease the speed gradually, okay? So, uh, what we can do through such kind of low pass filtering, okay? We would like to get the tendency to increase or decrease the speed, that's it. Because there is, never mind for wha what kind of uh, fish detector you have, usually there is some kind of very high frequency component. Such kind of very high frequency component is harmful for your VCO. It will run faster, slower, faster, slower. It will generate a lot of noise, but it doesn't make any sense. Right, so we need to filter out the high frequency component. Only get the low frequency one to increase or decrease the oscillation frequency. So that is the function of your loop filter. Loop filter definitely is some kind of low pass filter, not the others, low pass filter, okay? Then as I told you, 
the visual output will be n times higher than your reference input frequency. So by changing n, you can change the output frequency. Bingo for frequency synthesizer. Okay? And then phase detector. Hmm. As I told you already, the phase difference and the average output, please pay attention to this. How to get the average output? Lopez field theory. Okay, and hopefully the V out is linearly dependent on your phase error. Okay, and then we have the gain. The gain means what? The slope. For a fixed phase difference, how much extra output voltage you will get. That is the gain for phase detector. Okay. Allow me to introduce you the first generation phase detector that is analog multiplier. Okay. And hmm, the most famous is Gilbert multiplier. I think uh, the students maybe in Professor Professor Zhang's lab did some kind of design. Gilbert multiplier for very high frequency one. Okay? Yeah. Anyway. What is the operation principle? I told you already. Oh, this one. See? For example, cosine omega t plus some kind of uh, phase and co cosine omega t. The same frequency for local aspect. I told you already. So we get the difference and the summation of your A and B. A minus B and A plus B. Filter out that. Yeah. How to filter out the high frequency one? That is the function for your loop filter I told you already. Okay. So, since after you can guess we have low pitch filtering in the loop, so we don't need to care about this. See? So for two signals, one is input, the other one is output. Okay, maybe this is input and that is your output, but, but the output has some kind of phase error between input, right? So you can plot it because it is some kind of cosine or sine. It looks like this. Okay? The output wave is still a sine wave. All right? So we try to lock at this region. At with the so the so called linear region. Okay, but to be honest, if you ask me, hey professor, if the face arrow is here or there, does the face detector still functions? Still functions? Yes. But the slope is smaller here and there, right? Then here. It means what? The locking speed, the settling time. The locking speed will be reduced. It means the settling time will be longer. That's it. It still functions here or there, but uh, according to settling time, it will become longer. So usually, usually we focus on the linear region, especially for analysis. Okay, because for analysis, you will always say, according to linear model. Oh, everything is linear, just like what I mentioned to you. Oh, it is linear. Is it correct? No, in practice, no. All right? So that is only some kind of approximation. Without the approximation, I promise you, we cannot do almost everything. How can I say? We cannot do almost anything. Okay? So for humankind, for derivation, theoretical analysis, usually we linearize the model. We need to do such kind of linearization. Otherwise, you don't have the chance to analyze it. 
你要分析就几乎就一定要把它线性化，你才有办法做哈。这是我们从电路里面所学到的。With any kind of nonlinear device inside, always you cannot do any kind of analysis. It is simply too hard for humankind. It is only good for computers, not for us. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so if you learn from textbooks, they usually told you ah the lock range. For this one is maybe positive, negative, yeah, two pi over three. It means positive, negative, sixty degrees only once. Oh, oh so, 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 yeah, positive, negative, sixty. So overall, right, the rock range from here to there only one third of the all of the whole period. Only one third? Is it true? No, no. I need to tell you, even here or there, it's still function. It is still functional, but the performance will be poor. Okay, the locking speed uh, will be slow down. Blah blah blah. Ah, anyway, but I need to warn you: if your face is around here or there, the slope is almost zero, right? Zero means what? Never mind. The lady wrong face, the slower you don't have. You have no response. It doesn't make any sense. It means the locking mechanism is failed for such a kind of zero slope region. Okay, so don't operate your face detector around here or there. Oh, for very small slope, it doesn't make any sense. The slower slope means what? The longer settle in time. If the slope is zero, then it means you have infinite lacking time. Yeah, you don't have any chance to, yeah, to trace the lady. No, forget about it. Okay. Oh, that is some kind of simulation output. Uh, again, for real output, it look like this. But we need to filter out the high frequency one. Otherwise, your oscillator will be speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. It doesn't make sense. Again, it will generate too much noise to harm all the devices, all the system. Okay, so we need to filter out the high frequency one to get only the low frequency one. And you can see, oh, the characteristic curve is much similar to this. It's periodic. It's periodic, not only for one cycle. Okay, because you get uh, some kind of uh, cosine something, right? So the if the error is larger, okay, it will, it will behave like this. Okay. So it is good. Why? Because if you cannot lock here, uh, just like you, you would like to trace the lady. Oh, but she runs too fast. So what you can do? <laughs> she goes here, right? Right. So from the beginning, you are here, and the lady is there. But she runs too fast over <laughs> 180 <laughs> degrees. Right now, she's here, right? So the best policy for you is not to trace her. No, 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 no. You need to slow down to wait for her to pace by you, right? So this is totally correct, OK? Yeah, after the maximum, uh, you, should you, you simply give up. So oh, here, OK, you can slow down, wait for the lady <laughs> to go through. Then you are here. Come on, tracer. Oh, she's still very good at running. Okay, again, you slow down, then tracer, slow down, and tracer. Finally, you can lock her. Got it? That's it. Bingo. So even for such kind of circuit without any light, but its behavior is still much similar to our humankind. Right? Speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. It's not harmful, no. It's still helpful. And the behavior, as I explained, is totally correct. OK? So you can see, you can see, according to the running, OK? 50% speed up, 50% slow down. That is totally correct. But finally, if you would like to lock the lady, you need to be here, not there, okay? Because that is only for transient. 
if the lady is, is here, closer to you, behind you, you slow down, right? That is correct. But you cannot lock here. Why? Because right now, you are yeah, locked to each other side by side. But according to noise, is the lady run a little bit faster? <laughs> faster? Then you slow down your speed because the slope is negative, right? She runs a little bit according to noise. Yeah, the input runs a little bit in front of you. Then you slow down. It doesn't make any sense. So you cannot lock the input here. No, 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 no. Okay? You can only finally lock at this one. Positive slope. It according to noise, it, up, it operates a little bit higher. Then you speed up. It operates a little bit lower. You slow down. Okay? Then you can lock the input right here. Correct. For final lock. There is some major concerns here because, because first of all, <coughs> amplitude, your input amplitude, your output amplitude. Oh, we can control the output amplitude, but you cannot control the input amplitude. So you will see for the final term, you, you will have A by B to influence the VD, the average of your phase detector output. It doesn't make any sense. If the input signal becomes larger, what do I mean? Oh, if you get closer to the base station, then the input signal will be enhanced. Okay? Then the operation, the settling, the operation speed will be increased, uh, the settling time will decrease. Maybe you will say, oh, that is good. However, for our mobile phone system, sometimes you get closer, sometimes you get further, far away from the base station. Oh, that is really upset. You, okay. If you are far away from the base station, then the magnitude of your input will, will be decreased, so the VD output will be decreased, the KD, okay, the KPD will be decreased. It doesn't make any sense. So we hope, never mind, you are closer or uh, further I mean far away from the base station. We hope the performance of your mobile phone, hopefully, is still the same. So how to deal with such kind of input magnitude? The impact of the input magnitude. Hopefully, never mind how large, how small the input signal is, we still achieve the same performance. So this is what we can do, face, digital face, detector, exclusive all from the very beginning. Don't be afraid from the uh, sky. Everything needs to be in sine wave, okay? Because according to spectrum, sine wave means one night. You don't interfere the others. With square, oh, you have the first fundamental, the second, the third. Wow, 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 a lot of interference. It is not allowed. Okay, so in the sky, only sine wave. But after receiver, you can amplify from sine to bit, square wave. That's it? You amplify. That's it. Okay, so to make, never mind your input signal or your output signal, from sine to square, piece of cake. That's it. Or even you don't need to do such kind of amplification. In theory, some kind of comparator should be enough. That's it. Set. Okay. So after you make your, your input and output signal from analog, sine wave, to be digital, square wave, configurations, we can apply such kind of phase detector, exclusive all. For the operation of exclusive all, you can guess mm, if they are the same, you get zero. If they are not the same, you get one for the output. That's it. Okay? <laughs> so look like this. I'm one, you are zero, I get one. I'm one, you are one, I get zero. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's it. Yeah, so oh, you can see the difference between you and me. Delta phi. Okay? If you are slower, I will get larger output. Configurations, that is what we want. This is input, that is output, okay? The more phase lag, 
first leg, okay? The more output from your PC. Bingo. Yeah. So we have, that is what we want. Okay? Got it. Yeah. So if we are synchronized to each other, oh, I'm one, you're one, I'm zero, you are zero. <laughs> we get all zero for the output here, zero degree. Okay? If we are 90 degrees in phase shift, just right now, oh, ni uh, 90 degrees means one quarter, seven three, right? So you can, oh, one zero, one quarter, the second quarter, one one, zero, right? And zero one, one, zero zero, get zero. Ah, uh -huh, you can see 50% are high, 50% are low. So here. So what is the maximum output? We are totally different. Totally different means what? 180 degrees in difference. So I'm one, you are zero. I'm zero, you are one. Oh, so output is here. Got it? So we get this one. So what is the linear range? Pi. It is larger than 120 from this one, right? And also you can see the input magnitude is not at the output, nothing at the output. Okay, because we do comparison to get only zero and one, only zero and one, no input magnitude information. Okay, that is really good. But what will go wrong? For the others, you can do it by yourself. Okay, just do it by yourself. I explained this one already. And what if uh, you get more, uh, it will go down. Uh, just uh, again, this is a simple to test digital logical gate. I think the operation <laughs> for you is okay. Otherwise, you don't have the right to sit here because you are graduate students instead of bachelor students. You are supposed to know every kind of fundamental idea. Never mind, it is digital or analog. Anybody who is troubled <laughs> about destructive all operation? I don't think so, right? That is really easy to understand. You get the, you get this. What is the problem? In theory, we need exactly 50% QT cycle for both input and output. If not, what is the consequence? Okay, I don't have time to explain, so I only show you the result. Here and there. <laughs> the peaks will be flatty. Okay, yeah. Uh, but what? Oh, just do it by yourself. Uh, for example, if input, if your input is not fit with 50% QT cycle, for example, less than do it by yourself, okay? <laughs> you will get a flat one, a flat one. That's it. So what is the impact? The linear range, the log range will be reduced because you get something like this, okay? I told you already, for the flat one, it doesn't work at all. Okay, so the log range is the linear range. So the linear range, the range, the log range will be reduced substantially according to QT cycle error. Can you promise me the input and the output are with 50% of QT cycle? Forget about it. No way. Even you generate your local signal, I mean the upper, the upper signal from your local oscillator, forget about it. It's really hard to keep 50% for QT cycle. Okay? So what do we can do? Hmm, hopefully we don't have such kind of lever trigger operation. Hopefully we only focus on edges. For example, rising edge. That is the key idea. Okay? Got it? So allow me to show you. Oh, that is also blah, 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 blah. Okay, yeah. 
after filtering, you still get that kind of high, low, high, low, a positive, negative, you know, but, but, but for 180 degrees. Okay. Yeah, it's really good. And also that when locked in the middle, right, zero to pi, oh, you get 90 degrees in difference. That is good for I2 operation, in phase, outer phase operation. Okay, I feel like I don't care. Yeah. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Anyway, anyway, I need to tell you. That's kind never mind analog multiplier of uh, digital exclusive L, uh, exclusive OR, they don't have the capability to discriminate frequency difference. How many about the Okay? So it means what? If the input and output with different frequencies, most fish detectors just let it be. They don't have the capability to generate higher output for higher frequency, lower output for lower frequency is really bad. Okay? Yeah, no dead zone. Anyway, I will explain what is dead zone. Later you will know. Then we go for the most popular structure, commonly used structure. Yeah. This is the fourth tier now. I cannot say it's still the best, but anyway, for the best actually is some kind of modification from this structure. So uh, in theory, it still survives here and maybe into the future. Because the simple idea is applied from level three goals, one, zero. Instead, edge trigger, we focus on the edges instead of the levels, okay? But how to focus on edges? We need cracking. We need a crack to sample. Again, deeply crack to sample the input and output, that's it. Okay, so ideally, you have two D3 flops, okay? For those D3 flops, the input is always high, always one. That's it. So for the input, the right gene, if I don't mention about positive or negative, we always focus on right gene edge instead of foreign edge. Okay? Ah, uh, uh, Unless you would like to have double data rate, then positive, negative, all of them. Okay, I feel like I don't care, I don't mind. But anyway, for high frequency operation, usually the simpler, the better, okay? So anyway, for PFD, usually we don't focus on two edges. We only focus on single one, usually on rising edges instead of falling edges. Anyway, for the rising edge of your input signal, you trigger the output. You sample one to the output, right? That's it, that's it. And if there is no other mechanism, after you sample it, it will become one. For the next sample, for the it will always become one. So we need, we need the other mechanism to reset the D3 flop. Later I will show you, okay? So, after the region, uh, for example, the input leaves the output. The input region edge arrive earlier than the output. Okay, that is for the first explanation. Yeah, I write, I my region edge arrives first, so I set my output to be one. Okay, and then here comes the region edge of your output. So you also set your output to be one. But through the help of NAND, if both are one, you get zero to reset both. That's it. That's it? So you can see my rising edge to set my own output to be one. Your rising edge to set 
you will write your output to be one. But both outputs are one immediately in theory. You get reset to reset both outputs back to zero for the next operation. That it? That it? So how long, how wide you can detect the phase difference? In theory, the full cycle. You can expand the region edge here, edge edge. The phase lag for your output can be almost two pi. That it? Two pi means what? It is almost full for QA. It is almost zero for QB. On the contrary, if the output arrives earlier, then the input, what will be the consequence? Almost zero for input, one for output. That's it? Oh. So I, I, I'm talking about the maximum. Okay? So for the input, from 0 to 2 pi. I'm larger than you. If input is uh, input lags output, input be 2, 2, how much? It will go all the way to minus 1. That is for minus 2 pi. Positive 2 pi. That is, this is positive 1, that is minus 1. I mean, we have differential output, the concept. Okay? Wow, wow's what? Right now, the linear range is 4 pi. Bingo. That it? Yeah, that is uh, some kind of state diagram. If the frequencies are not the same, so if my frequency is higher than you, frequency instead of phase, frequency, higher frequency means what? More Region edge is for A, right? Right? So it is more likely the output of A will be set to 1 than B, right? Did, do you got the point? If my frequency is higher than you, my region edge will be more than you. So I will more likely to set my output to 1. That's it. That's it? So, my output on average were larger than yours. That's it? That's it. For analysis, it's really hard. But by explanation, really easy to understand. So, if the output, if the input frequency is larger than the output, <laughs> we will get more QA than QB. On the contrary, if input frequency is lower than output, then you <laughs> set more likely more edges here to set QB. Okay? So the average output QB will be larger than QA. It means what? This circuit can be applied to sense not only the phase difference, but also the frequency difference. And this is the reason why we call it phase frequency detector. Bingo. That is the first circuit we can tell the difference for not only phase, but also frequency. Really, really fantastic. OK? Yeah. But nothing is free. We have some problems. Yeah, because that is only in theory here or there. Yeah. Anyway, again, if the region is just like here, arrive first, we set it to be one, right? So after the region edge of B is set to be one. One one get zero reset. But, 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 it takes time. From the region edge of B to set 
it to be what? It takes time. From here to there. And then, one, one to make it zero, it takes time here. And also, e e only if the reset is zero, to make the output both from one to zero, it also takes time. Got it? So, if I zoom it for you, see? Again, from the rising edge of B to the output, and then, NAND gate, and then, reset for both. Got it? That is a so-called dead zone. Okay? If, what do I mean? If the phase difference between A and B is less than the overall settling time, then both output will be almost the same. Okay, never mind. I lead you or I lag you. Sorry for that. The output process for both A and B are about the same. So you will lose the capability to differentiate the phase difference or the frequency. Oh, for frequency difference, no worries, it happens. Yeah, for such kind of cycle. So some, maybe some of them is small, but some of them is larger, so you don't need to care about that. But anyway, for phase, for phase difference, if they are too, the, th the difference is too small, then we lose the phase difference differential di uh, discrimination capability. That is a so-called dead zone. Okay, so if you zoom it, I mean according to this one, sorry, if you zoom it out, you will see the signal like that. That is so-called dead zone. Okay, so you lose the capability to differentiate the difference between both. And what is the consequence? Noise. Jitter, 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 okay? Jitter for your output. Why? Again, it looks like this. Just like you are the coach for the boy to chase the lady, right? But, but the, uh, right now, you are the coach, it means you are the face detector, you are the eyes of the boy. Uh, maybe the boy uh, is blind, okay? So you, you are the face detector to help him. So you can see, wrong face there, wrong face there to catch the lady. Oh, if he, he goes too much, hey, slower, slower, slower down, okay? But sadly enough, there is some, you are, you are the coach, yeah, beside the yard, gym yard in Dong Chang, okay? There is a wall in front of you. <laughs> so if the boy and the girl are out of the region, you will say, oh, it's okay, faster, slower, okay? But in between, you have no idea because your eyes are blocked by the dead zone, right? So you have no idea whether the boy is, uh, how can I say, uh, is faster or slower than the lady. You have, you, you have some kind of free running. You have no c instruction for the boy. Just let it be. The wrong face, the slower. <laughs> okay, okay. So what I'm talking about is, for example, you would like to, that is, the, the uh, that is the face, lock the face, for example, zero degree, okay? But you are blocked here. That is for input. And how about the output faces? If the output face is here, you say, oh, too much, slow down. If the output face is, is there, ah, too, s yeah, too slow, speed up. Okay, but in between, <laughs> you just sleep. You just close your eyes, you have no idea. Okay, so the consequence will be after settling down, after lock, it is still not 
real locking. No, that is the input and that is the output. Because you don't have instruction, you don't have any kind of control. You lose your control for the output, right? So the output, you can you can guess what will be the output according to leakage. Okay. Or damping. That is the input phase here. And the output phase? Here? No idea. So it will go faster, faster, and faster. Okay? <laughs> you say, ah, no, 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 no. You are out, you, are, you go too fast. Come, come on, slow down. Oh, slow down, slow down. And then, oh, you lose the control again. So just let it be. Slow down, slow down. Ah, 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 too small. Right? Too slow. Then come on, speed up. Okay, what does it mean? Here, you can call it slow down. There, you can tell your output to speed up. But in between, nothing you can do. So how about the face? The output face, you can guess for the real operation. Okay, again, this is the ideal lock face, but it is blocked by that zone, right? So where is the your upper upper face? I promise you, it will go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Only if it is above the dead zone, you will tell him to slow down. And to the other side, you can tell it to speed up. So after locking, even after locking, the upper face is still <laughs> full around the dead zone. So the larger dead zone, the more detail. That's it. Okay? It causes a lot of detail. Wow, what you can do? Reduce the dead zone to zero. But how? Okay, okay. The methodology to reduce the dead zone is totally out of your imagination. Later I will explain. To reduce the, the time here, the minimum time here to make it become zero, in idea, is right. In practice, it's totally wrong. You need to increase it. Wow, increase it for what? Okay, later. Later, I will explain. But again, you need to do D free flop. Okay, that is a very simple one. Uh, static D free flop, but it's no good for high frequency operation. Okay, days ago I went to NQEE uh, to attend the oral defense of one uh, master student there. Oh, it's really sad. The student applied such kind of easy to test free free flop for uh, around one megahertz operation, right? So uh, he was really upset because all the committee members said a lot of bad words. Uh, Chris Bice is wrong, uh, even though the chip he made this instead of nothing, okay? But he still criticized very much by the committee, including myself, blah, blah, blah. But that is only one issue. He has a lot of the other issues. He didn't pay attention. As an analog acid designer, I told you already, you need to pay attention to every kind of detail, right? He pays he paid no attention to any kind of detail. But he's lucky, he's lucky enough to get the chip functional. Okay, but how about the performance? How can I say? Not so good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he passed the oral examination, but it's very low grading. <laughs> That's it. He's really upset. Okay. Yeah. For such kind of phase frequency detector, you can see when luck. The phase difference is zero, even with that zone. Yeah, it's higher, lower, higher, uh, lower. So on average, it's still zero. Okay, but it causes a lot of detail for your output. Because the phase of output is changing, right? So if you, on the, uh, your oscilloscope, that is the idea, the rising edge for your input, right? And how about output? It is controlled by that zone, the jitter. Okay, so the smaller that zone, the smaller jitter. Okay, but how to make it later? I will explain. 
it has some kind of technical problem. Yeah. Oh, this is some kind of uh, static uh, because C flip flop, first C flip, second C flip flop, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, that is what I told you. Okay. For the dynamic one, I don't have time to explain. So if you are happy, first of all, I recommend you to read some paper or uh, from the textbook, analyze design textbook, focusing on true single purse clocking. True. Single. S I N G L E. Purse. Clock. Clocking. TSPC. Here now, TSPC is still the best. Okay, but but with some kind of modification, but anyway, it's still TSPC. That is the best for dynamic one. I told you already. The major difference between dynamic and static is dynamic circuit can operate with much higher frequency than static one, but it has some kind of drawback because dynamic one operate how according to the velocity capacitance. If you operate the circuit at too low frequency, then the charges on the velocity capacitor will be uh, is passed. You will get wrong result. Okay? So in frequency band, allow me to show you again. Maybe this is for this for static one. From DC to some kind of frequency limit. And how about uh, the dynamic one? It works in that way. Much higher frequency but has Low limit. It cannot operate according to DC. No, forget about it. Okay? Yeah. So if your operation frequency is high, then I recommend you use dynamic one instead of static one. It can not only speed up the operation, but also lower down the power consumption. Because dynamic circuit usually has less gate, okay? Less gate means less power consumption, okay? That is the idea. And wha how about charge pump? Charge pump, according to the output of QA and QB, to charge or to discharge your capacity, that's it, okay? So we need what? Current sources. But for such kind of switching, okay, in the past, we have strain switching. Strain switching is not good. Why? Because I told you already, during turn off the switch, a lot of care, th this is the switch, analog switch, transmission gate. The charges during turning off, during turning on, you need a lot of charges to construct effective channel to conduct your source and drain, right? But by turning off, all the charges needs to be pushed out to your output or input. I don't care. So some of the charges will be pushed to the output. It's no good. It's really harmful for your output voltage. Okay? Not only here, but also there. Ah, so what we can do is, yeah, you can say, hey, we have a dummy switch. We have a uh, blah, blah. Okay, okay. It helps, that, but it cannot cancel all of them. Charge injection, clock free through. Uh, with dummy switch, you can reduce the impact, but you cannot make the impact to zero. So we don't have such kind of strain switching. Actually, we have source switching. It means the switch is not connected to output, no, ah, to the base, okay? That's it, to the sources. To the PMOS, to the, to the MOS, it will be uh, much better. Yeah, so it operates, this is PFD, and that is charge pump, that's it, okay? So if, again, the input leads the output, and it means output needs to speed up, but how to make it? Oh, you can see, I charge the capacitor, and in theory, no discharge, okay? So you can see the output, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, you will speed up the VCO all the way to the maximum. Very faster than the input. So you can see, so no 
or later, I, I think sooner, sooner your output because it runs faster, right? Then runs faster means what? The period will be shorter, right? Higher frequency means shorter period, right? So the period for the first, for the second, for the third will be reduced, reduced, reduced. Got it? So finally, the region edge will lock the input. That's it. Because the period is shortened, shortened, shortened. Okay? That's it. That's it. But there was the problem right now. Uh -uh. Again, if the process to charge or discharge become too small, why? Because they are too close to each other. Then the process become too small. Uh-oh. You cannot turn the switch on. <laughs> the problem is totally contradictory to that zone, right? Right? Right now, if the process become too small, you cannot turn on S1 or S2. Oh, it's really annoying. You cannot turn them on, no charging, no discharging. It means you out of the control. Never mind who leads whom. 不管谁领先或落后，你完全瞎了，因为你没有办法打开开关，所以就直接漏电了。Okay, out of control, totally out of control. What you can do? Hmm, on the contrary, we need to make sure the minimum per switch to turn on S1 and S2. How to make sure the minimum per switch? I told you already, from here to there, from here to there, and to reset, it takes time, right? But the time usually is not good enough, so we need to have extra delay here to, mix, to make the maximum output width to turn on S1 and S2. That's it. That is the real mechanism to cancel the so-called dead zone. Got it? Okay, so we need extra delay. We need extra delay here. But how? Hmm. The easiest way is to have some kind of capacitor. Okay, maybe you are you are unhappy. Then you can have some kind of resistor or something, or you have a lot of uh, afternoon, a lot of buffer. Buffer means what? Two not gate, two inverter. Okay, I feel like I don't care, I don't mind. Okay, so to create large enough delay, we need delay element after the end of NAND gate. End of NAND means uh, depends on the reset mechanism. Uh, some circuit needs high to reset, some circuit, need, some circuit needs low to reset, I don't care, okay, yeah, as you like. Anyway, we need to act extra delay. But even you get extra delay, good enough extra delay, what will be the operation? No worries, you don't need to worry, okay? Um, I hope fully, hopefully I'm a good enough teacher to help you get all the fundamental understanding about the circuit operation. Ah, you see? If you get extra delay here to make the minimum width to turn on the switch, and then if I arrive earlier than you, I will set my purse, my output purse, right? Earlier than output, right? So you can still see this. This is the minimum width. But my, because I set my output to one earlier than you, supposed to be my, uh, uh, to you need to be careful. They both, if they match to each other, I mean the property here, there, they match to each other. So you get one, you get one, then it, it is symmetrical from A to B. I don't care. Th that is in theory. I am symmetrical for my both input. So you can see the setting time here to there 
here to there exactly the same. Means what? In theory, both both output will be turned off at the same time. But I set my output earlier than you. So it means what? The charging time is larger than the discharging time. That's it? So the output is still increasing. Bingo. That is what I can tell. On the contrary, if QB arrives earlier, then haha, -ha, B arrives earlier, then QB will become this, and this is for QA. They will be reset at the same time. Got it? So QB is still discharging is larger, is longer than charging. So the output will be decreased. It means not that long anymore, we can successfully, I mean, PFD plus charge pump, we can make it like this, okay? But nothing's free. What is the drawback? What is the price you need to pay? Okay, very simple. In the past, to positive two pi, negative 2 pi, right? The maximum and minimum will be reduced. That's it. Okay, again, again, you will get something like this. Okay? That's it. Here and there. So it means the overall large range will be reduced by the dead zone of PFD. But the dead zone for PFD plus Okay, it's zero. That's it. Okay, and how about loop filter? Uh, the usually we apply second loop filter, second order or third order. Okay, yeah, this is third order. Oh, no, this second order. Sorry, uh, for third order. And how about VCO? Mm, uh, you you can guess. As I mentioned, the higher control voltage usually the higher upper frequency. Okay, and again, uh, the slope is called the gain of your VCO, the gain of sensitivity of your VCO, all right? Uh, that is for only your lin linearized model. How about the real one? Maybe it behaves like this, okay? Oh, sorry, maybe, no, 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 no. If the, imp the control voltage is too small, you have nothing. Okay, here. And if, if, if it is too high, then the output frequency will be saturated because the output frequency has no way to become infinite. No, right? So that is more practical. Uh, but again, we still focus on this, the linear region for analysis. Don't tell me, eh, how about here or there? It's still functional. It's still functional, but with poorer performance, that's it, okay? So the slope here, we call it KVCO, and then, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, 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 what's this? How about the real VCO? Till now, I, I, I didn't show you the real circuit, and this is the circuit for you, the simplest one. The master student days ago had the uh, always difference in NTU double. Do you try the simple to test circuit? That is the first generation. It doesn't make any sense, okay? Anyway, anyhow. Uh, you can see what is the concept. Uh, okay, okay. You can see for the MOS V in here, the larger V in means what? The more current you can conduct. That's it? That's it. Simple to test idea. So the larger input the more current, right? And this is what? That is what? Current mirror, right? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So the more input, the larger current here and current mirror there. And this, the current is the same in idea. And then another current mirror, yeah, to control here, to control there. So the charging current and the discharging current 
of the NAT gate actually is controlled by VIN, that's it. Okay, so the higher VIN, the larger charging, the larger discharging current, it means uh, uh, the NAT gate can operate faster. That's it. And also you can see we have odd number of NAT gate. Alarm one, two, three, four, five. Then go back to the origin. Here, odd number of NAT gate connect connected in the ring. So we call it ring oscillator. Huan Zhuang Shen Dang Ji. Wow, piece of cake. That's it. Do it by yourself. Okay. But what is the problem? I told you already. Hmm. If the ring is too small, <laughs> then you have no output. No output. No output. Output means what? The PFD will simply become blind. No output to be compared. So it cannot help you anymore. Okay? So, out of order. To prevent such kind of really upset condition, because from the beginning, yeah, if the wind is not high enough, then here it failed. It doesn't make any sense. Okay? So, what you can do here? extra diode connected transistor <laughs> even though this is cut off it is still having to conduct some current but not too much what does it mean what does it mean the aspect ratio should be much less than your v in that's it and this promise you the minimum output frequency for your VCO. So right now VCO looks like that. Yeah, that is the from the minimum. Even though your V in is zero, I don't care because I have this one to help. That's it. Okay, ring oscillator. All right. Oh, so, sorry. I show you the real circuit for PFD and then the real circuit for oscillator. And what do you need? Low pass filter. Piece of cake, okay? Low pass filter, maybe something like this, or even more. I and C, I and C, good enough. How about the active one with open? Forget about open for low pass filter. Because with open, you need to have some kind of band limit. It's really harmful for high frequency operation. Okay, so nowadays nobody implement any kind of active low pass filter. Because we always hope we can operate the circuit as high and high frequency, yeah, as high as possible. Okay, so the fundamental loop again, PD plus VCO, but uh, it doesn't make any sense. We need the help of L low pass filter. Okay, yeah, after locking, I told you, after locking, it means phi out minus phi in need to be a constant. Okay? I, I don't care how much. Since it is a constant, then you differentiate both sides. The differentiation of phase means frequency. Okay? 相位的微分就是频率。频率的积分就是相位。千万不要搞错。so after differentiate both sides, constant means zero. Okay? Differentiate of the output phase becomes output frequency. So output frequency minus input frequency will be zero. It means that is what I told you. After locking, output frequency needs to be exactly the same as the input frequency. Okay. Yeah. And what is the final Phase error. Okay. According to linear model, okay, linear model here. That is for VCO because you know your output frequency needs to be exactly the same as your input. If your input is here, then the control voltage of your VCO needs to be this. So let's go back to check the PFD. Output. Okay? To generate this voltage, you need that phase. Got it? Got it? That's it. Okay? So it means what? 
the higher input frequency, it means the higher control voltage for VCO. The higher control voltage for VCO means what? Ooh, larger phase error. I think you are unhappy with this. Okay, so after very simple calculation, this and that, oh, linear, within one minute you can make it by yourself. You get this. Phase error equals to omega 1 input frequency minus huh, W means what? From the beginning, if V control is zero, I, I told you we have some kind of fundamental oscillation frequency. Got it? Got it? Okay? So, and divided by KPD by KVCO. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, very good. So, how to reduce phase error if you guys would like to make it zero? So, sorry, to make it zero. How can you do? To enlarge this one. Okay? But to enlarge KPD or KVCO, you have two choices either enlarge KVCO or KPD. Right? Which one is better? How about K KVCO? It's no good. Why? Because if the slope is larger, like this, <laughs> nothing is perfect. The control voltage always has some kind of noise, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Noise ripple, uh, everything. Even you apply low pass filter, but low pass, low pass filter is not ideal, it's not perfect. So you have some kind of ripples on your VR. So the larger slope means ah, the more deviation for your output frequency. You will get a lot of fake jitter, fake noise. So the best way is to increase KPD. Okay? And how to make KPD? Infinite. That is what we want. If KPD can be infinite, then we will have zero phase delay. Okay? And that is what we can have. From the, okay, from this one? Mm, you can see. You can see. With such kind of three state phase frequency detector. Only if I need you. Never mind how small the output I, I will charge more than you discharge the output. Right? So step by step the control voltage will, will be pushed sky high. Alright? So you speed up you <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Again, never mind how small the phase difference is, the output voltage will become this. That is the according to differential operation because charging or discharging, see? That is the phase error. Never mind how small the phase error is, we will push if I need you. I will push, I will always charge it to maximum. If you lead me, you will discharge all the way to zero. That's it. So we have a very perfect characteristic curve for this kind of PFD discharge pump. We call it fan, fan operation. Later I will show you fan, fan. Okay? Perfect. So what is the slope here? Infinite. Got it? Infinite. That's it. Okay. Wow. So with such kind of PFD, I promise you, this one equivalent equivalently is infinite. And this one will be zero. Okay? So in theory, to reduce the jitter, that is a very important idea. Right now we have band band PFD, so this one is infinite. The output phase zero, uh, output phase error is zero. It's perfect. How about KVCO? Uh, to reduce jitter, it looks like that. It needs to be as flat as possible. But what is the consequence? The tuning range 
or be too small <laughs> because it's flat. Okay? It's too small. Hmm, what do you can do? Too small means what? For your radio. Oh, ICRT 100.7. <laughs> Maybe you can tune around 100. How about the 90? How about the 100 and, uh, and the 4 or something? Oh, forget about it. You cannot fully cover the whole range. Okay? Because the slope is too small, you can, you can only cover a little bit of the frequency. So what you need to do is, uh, for the frequency band, yeah, I for one, if it is too small, the slope is too small, I can only cover this one. So you need a lot of, of them to fully cover the whole range. Okay, what I'm talking about is okay for VCO, if possible, I recommend you to do something like this: one, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> what I'm talking about. We have a lot of different VCOs, okay, with very small slope to fully cover, because all of them, to fully cover the whole operation range of your application, that's it. But you may be curious how to make so many. Mm. Bingo, here. The secret is here. See? This one is flexible, is variable. That one is fixed, right? I told you from the beginning, this one much, much be much smaller than that. No, right now, it is totally reversed, okay? The aspect ratio for V in and the fixed one is reversed. Wow, the fixed part is modular than you. So you can tune only a little bit from zero to VDD. I don't care. You can only tune a little bit. But how to change this one should be variable. It means the overall aspect ratio is much larger than this. But it is composed by this. That's it. Minority weighted structure. So during locking, you need to select through the help of stuff, hopefully, to choose the largest, not in the, the second, or too much than the third. That it? The same idea is applied. That is for your good news. Please do something very similar to this to enhance the performance, to reduce the output jitter of your VCO, of your PL, it helps a lot. Okay, so but 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 you need be you need to be very careful for such kind of capture. Okay, B because from the beginning I have no idea what the operation frequency it will be according to process variation. Different chips will generate different frequency with the same condition. Okay, so. From the beginning, you need to select all of those properly, even after out of luck. So, but, but sometimes it will out of luck. Why? Because for our transmission system, it changes frequency very often, right? So after it changes frequency, oh, you, it will be out of luck. So you need the help of so-called luck detector. Uh, that is also some kind of fundamental idea, luck detector. Uh, uh, and how to implement luck detector, that is out of my scope, because it is not a fundamental circuit. But I, I'm not talking about that is hard to design. No, 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 no. B but I don't have time to explain that. So you can do it by yourself, luck detector, how to implement it. You can Google online or again, through i3.x Pro, you, you will get a lot of circuit for that, okay? So, luck detector can indicate your circuit, your PR is out of luck. Then, 
you need to recapture your input frequency. Okay? Not from the power on. A power on, you select the correct one, then you can live happily since you have to. No, no. <laughs> the transmitter will change the frequency, and the receiver needs to catch up, right? After that kind of frequency shift, frequency hopping, we call it helping, you need to change your upper frequency accordingly. So you need to do it again, again, and again. You need the help of lock detector. Anyway, anyhow. Okay? And, uh, Hannah, how about the uh, PLO analysis? <sighs> Let me check. I almost one. Sorry for that. Uh, all right, 10 more minutes. For the fir first of all, uh, this is the linearized model for your face detector. Got it? You, you can see, what does it mean? Ah, oh, we need to take the difference. Then, okay, what, what's this? Actually, it only simulates that. Okay? KPD, this one. And this is the face arrow, the spy in minus spy out. Got it? So what is the output phase? Uh, the, how about, uh, the average of the output voltage of the face detector? Yeah, it looks like, right? This is the difference, and A is that. So wha what I'm talking about is the block diagram is exactly the same as this curve, okay? They are talking about exactly the same thing. For your vision, it is better to understand, right? But for analysis, this one is better. But they are equivalently. They are equivalently exactly the same. And then your low pass filter, I don't care what kind of low pass filter you would like to have. And then VCO. Okay. And VCO, we, we have the idea of VCO. Okay? The more voltage, the larger output. So you have only Y equals to AX. Okay, so A is here. And then why we have that kind of divided by S? Because you need to get the output. I told you already. For your frequency after integration, you will get this one. Okay. Oh, actually, it is not omega. It should be frequency. So what is the difference of W and, the and S? Hmm. It needs to divide it by two pi. It means two pi here. Sorry for that. Okay? Yeah. And then you will get your phi out. But, but, okay, in radian frequency, you don't need two pi. Okay? But if you would like to express in degree, then you need to divide it by two pi. Blah, blah. So that is some kind of corresponding. Okay? Anyway, anyhow. And? We have open loop transfer function. Open loop means what? You cut it. Cut the feedback loop. And from here to there. Kai loop. What? Why we need this? To estimate the phase margin, the gain margin. For phase margin, as you learned from fundamental circuit theory, it had better be uh, 60. That is us that is a usual case. But in theory, 60 is not the best. Okay, around 50 is the best. Anyway, according to process variation, usually we design 60. Okay, that is the usual case. In theory, people told us 45. Okay, and I told you the best actually is 50. But we usually design 60 according to process variation. Okay. So open loop transfer function is very important for phase margin or gain margin uh, uh, estimation. Okay. And you can see the other very good important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just do it. From here, they just multiply this. Okay, you get this. 
okay? So you have one zero at origin. 你在零点的时候，你在原点有一个零点，有一个零极点 ，zero pole, okay? So one zero pole we call it type one. That is the definition for type one PLS. So if if you have two pole, two zero poles, then we call it type two, and then type three. Okay, that is the definition according to open loop. And how about closed loop? Piece of cake. Yeah, according to uh, 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 maybe chapter seven of microelectronics. Name name of my from microelectronics or uh, fundamental statistics theory. Yeah, it it just two such kind of S domain Laplace transform analysis. You will get this. Okay. So anyway. That is for type one PLL. And what is the result? Yeah, I, I think the Torah basis is really easy. Just do it by yourself. Allow me to show you the result. Again, for frequency hopping, you lock, you lock the input frequency here, but according to uh, frequency hopping, it changed to the second frequency according to your mobile phone. Okay, you need to change channels all the way. Anyway, what is the response for your output? You need to catch up with your input frequency. So we have some kind of damping. Okay? And you can see the damping ratio is here. Exponential minus something. Exponential minus something. Okay? So it means this term to shorten the settling time. It means the exponential decay had better become way, way. <laughs> How to make it faster? You need to increase this term because that is negative. So the magnitude here, this term needs to be increased. Okay? Yeah. And how about the damping frequency? The damping frequency is this. It's not so important. Okay? So this is for the damping. Anyway, if you don't have damping, we call it under damping. This is over damping, right? For under damping, what will go? The output will follow your input in this case. Usually, usually, the settling time is too long. Okay? So for our design, you need to have damping, under damping, and then control this one to make zeta omega n as large as possible. But what is omega n? What is zeta? Okay, according to uh, the, the, the derivation here, actually, unluckily enough, the product becomes half of the low pass filter boundaries. Okay? So it is contradict to each other. For example, if you would like to reduce the output jitter, output jitter, right? How to reduce the output jitter from, from here? The bandwidth needs to be as smaller as possible to stabilize the control voltage for UVCO, right? Right? But in this way, the bandwidth of your low pass filter is reduced, then this term is also reduced. What does it mean? The decay here will become <laughs> longer and longer. Okay, so what I would like to say is the settling speed and the bandwidth of your low patch filter needs to be compromised. That is the design for your trade-off. Okay, the trade-off between your settling speed and output jitter. That's it. Nothing is perfect. And don't ask me which one is important. Output jitter is important over <laughs> settling time. Don't ask me. Because it is case by case. You need to decide it by yourself according to your application. Okay?
So for linearized model, this is uh, some kind of bold plot for the two. As I mentioned, it has one zero at the origin. For bold plot, you, you need to know uh, the face. Okay? You will get this kind of. After you paste in the power, okay? Uh, no, 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 sorry for that. For bold plot, for simplicity, if you pass a power, then the face will decrease by 90 degrees. One power, 90 degrees. Okay? And the slope, minus 20 dB. Okay? Per decade. For each pole. So if you have two poles, then it will go down further. For the first pole, for the second pole, for the third pole, minus 20, minus 40, minus 60, all the way. How about the zeros? You, if you paste one zero, then it will increase by positive 20. That's it. That is for estimation with both plots. But actually, Actually, I need to tell you zero, uh, power of zero actually in the middle. <laughs> okay? Yeah, but for estimation, usually uh, we will say, ah, okay? The power position or the zero position. Anyway, but for more accuracy in the middle. Okay, it means uh, the zero here, or uh, the power here, Okay? One tenth, it is zero degrees, is different. Ti ten times higher. Yeah, minus 90 degrees. And myself, minus 45. That is more accurate estimation. The same for zero. Okay? Anyway, from the beginning, you have one power at zero. Zero means what? Origin. Because it is uh, some kind of log scale, okay? 10 minus what will become zero? Negative infinity. So it extends all the way to minus infinity. It means zero in log scale, the origin. Oh, 零点在极座,在对数轴上面是负的无限大,直的负的无限大才会变成零。Okay, uh, anyway, and this is your power. Your the power is here, right? We have one power. The first power is at zero. The second power actually is the bandwidth of your low pass filter here. So after passing that, the first power and the second power, you get minus forty. That's it. Okay. So what is the uh, face margin? Ah. You can see here. Uh oh, is it good? No, it's no good. Okay. So what you can do is, right now face margin is zero according to this plot. So you need to lower down the curve. How to lower down? Okay, all of that. And this is the reason why I hope you, KVCO, can do as small as possible, or the current, or anywhere. Okay. So in this way, you can see, ah, here, okay, the difference of the face and the minus 180, that is the face margin, okay? And the face margin had a better, for real design, 60 degrees. Okay, that's it, yeah. And uh, type two, this is uh, the so-called type two. You charge with the capacitor, with the help of a capacitor, okay? Yeah, so what is the, what is the uh, impedance of the capacitor? Actually, you know, SC1, right? And what is the impact of your charging and discharging current? IP, over two pi, because it is charged. For your face zero, uh, your face difference. Face difference between this will become up and down. The more face difference, it means the more charging or more discharging 
in different, okay? But it is done periodically, two pi. So for each period, you will charge arrow. For each period, it goes up and up and up, okay? On average, you get this, all right? So the slope is this one, IP over two pi. Anyway, that is what I can help. I, uh, that is a uh, uh, complicated surface for charge pump and face face frequency detector. We have this, and this is the loop filter, one capacitor. Okay, and again, you cut it to have the open loop transform function. Uh oh, the square of S. It means two poles at the origin. We call it type two. Okay, so that is type two. And how about type three? Type two actually has some kind of problem because there is no ideal capacitor. You need some kind of ESR, effective serious resistance. Okay, so for each cycle, you need to charge it, you need to discharge it. You will have uh, something like this. Is no good. To charge it, to discharge it, you have some kind of voltage jump to cause a lot of jitters for your output. So what we can do? Another capacitor to fill out this. That is type three. Okay? That is for your yeah, you, you can do the analysis by yourself. Not so hard. Yeah, we have some kind of uh oh yeah, anyway, that is for third order. Third order usually is what we design for PL to reduce the uh, to reduce the output jitter, okay? To get better performance. Yeah. And this is the second order low pass filter look like this or look like that. Anyway, allow me to show you because uh, we don't have good enough time. Yeah, this is what I would like to tell you. For settling time fif fifty watt, around fifty one degree phase margin will be the best. But anyway, uh, according to process of variation, we always focus on 60, okay? But not too much, okay? This is design flow and much too active, forget about it, because open, open, okay? We don't do anything like that, all right? Yeah, we have a lot of issues. Allow me to show you the simulation, okay? PL block diagram, uh, face detect, PFT, I told you from PSPC, uh, or even static one, for fun, okay, charge pump. And then uh, second order loop filter, uh, anyway, uh, VCO, VCO I show you already. And then divider, divider because the, the output is already one and zero, so divider actually is in this whole domain, do it by yourself, okay, anyway. Uh, that is for face detector one. I mean this one. You can see a very, very bad dead zone here. So yeah, after we try to, what is the difference from this one to that one? Extra delay. Okay, and then you can see, wow, very good. No dead zone. And uh, th th that is used to charge or discharge, okay, your circuit. And VCO, uh, that is the uh, uh, first PIO we implemented in our lab more than 10 or 15 years ago, all right? So again, the student uh, to play safe used such kind of very simple uh, single ended oscillator, VCO, okay? You can see the input and the diode. The always on diode connection system to conduct the minimum current. Okay? And three stages one, two, and three go back. That's it. Okay? Yeah, anyway, anyhow. Uh, these two are for question, can you on, can you all forget about it? Divider, I, I, I told you that is in this total domain, so I don't care. Let's go for the result. You can see with. Face detector two, PFD two, without dead zone. Wow. 
Okay. After locking, the ripple on your V bias is really small, and with PFP one, oh, you can see from point mm, mm, uh, nine hundred fifty all the way to <laughs> one point twenty five. It doesn't make any sense for such kind of very huge variation on your visual input. It will cause a lot of upper jitter. Okay, first of all, I need to mention that. How good your PL is? The first parameter you need to watch is V bias. Uh, I mean the input for VCO. Okay? The more stable V bias, the better VCO performance. The less output jitter. That is what I mean. For all of you, first of all, you need to see this is the locking project or capturing project. Uh, I don't care. Okay? How much time it depends on your application. So first of all, you need to estimate the scattering time here or the capturing, cat capturing time here, and then how stable your VCO will be. Okay, so this, the transient for you to estimate how much time you need to take to lock your output to your input. In theory, the shorter the better, but the shorter usually call usually means the more damping. Okay, it will cause uh, some trouble for you. And then, how good your VCO output will be? You just ta have a look at the V bias voltage. The smaller variation is usually not always. Okay, is usually the better. Okay, and this is what my student did. The first student in my lab. He applies MATLAB <laughs> yeah, to model all those devices. Okay, then we can do the so-called behavior simulation. Not circuit simulation. This is from SPICE, circuit simulation. We need to have very accurate model for each device. Okay, but this only theoretical model. Okay, you can do it by yourself. All right? Yeah, you can. Uh, according to the textbook, you have a lot of equations. You just key in all the equations, blah, 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 then you, you have this. All right? Well, how to design the third order field, I told you already. Or uh, many of the equations, just key in. Anyway, allow me to show you. Oh, okay. That is the so-called PIO behavior simulation through the help of Simulink. Simulink, actually, it is some kind of tool, but in MATLAB, okay? So, MATLAB, you just do it by yourself, okay? One more minute, sorry for that. I have a very important meeting from the university later. PFT, charge pump, loop, loop filter, VCO. Hmm, how to model all those important devices, or even divider, okay? How to model it? Allow me to show you P step by step. For PFT, you can see, huh, we have D3 flop, D3 flop. In Simulink, the toolbox, you just drag and play. And then you need some kind of delay. You just have some kind of delay element and tell MATLAB how much delay you, you, you would like to have. Okay? And then then if you would like to watch the waveform, you need to have scope. There is some kind of instance embedded in Simulink. You just drag and place. Okay? You can see the PFD is totally used to simulate this. One by one. Piece of cake, right? One by one. And how about church pump? The same. This is some kind of summer, positive for up, negative for down, okay? And IP, the charging discharging current, okay? And how about loop filter? According to Laplace transform, you just input the overall equation into the function block, okay? And how about VCO? Ah, <laughs> VCO is similar to this. 
the fundamental one omega zero here omega zero right two pi free running frequency that is for uh, frequency right so how to make it omega two pi pi is a spatial parameter okay because in the past we have no way to input pi so it is spelled as pi pi if you print it in MATLAB pi you will get blah 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 all of them okay to maybe 20 digits I feel like I don't care all right and then adder <laughs> because your output frequency right is your control voltage multiplied by k vco plus omega zero so that is what i say you just have this one omega zero plus right the output the control voltage with your kv and two pi okay uh, because two pi for omega and then some over the then so what i'm talking about is omega G, uh, uh, omega out is omega zero plus kvco uh, no 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 your control voltage omega zero plus kvco and then uh, v control v control from here ah, anyway what i'm talking about is just implemented here drag and play and place that's it okay again if you would like to watch the output frequency because this is omega to get frequency you need to divide it by two pi okay and then you will prescale you get the sine wave output all right and by integration your frequency will become so sorry this is frequency already will become degrees your phase and then that is sine wave right but for your PD it needs to be uh, it needs to be digital so we use this comparator that's it larger than larger than zero you, you get one less than that you get minus one minus one be become zero for your digital circuit ah, very easy the sine help you to get square wave from sine wave that's it okay so is it hard is it difficult to simulate no piece of cake one by one you map your equation or your circuit to simulink that's it okay allow me to show you that is the last slide i would like to share with you see this is from simulink and that is from x spice within seconds or even much less than one second because uh, nowadays the computer is really powerful right <laughs> less than one second you just click and then you get the result but for real as you spice even for pre-simulation at the click you need to you, you can go get a coffee come back oh not yet maybe you can go to attend a class go back oh to get the final result hours usually for complicated design okay sometimes these yeah because you have many kind of devices inside okay but within seconds or much less than one second you can get the behavior simulation and please pay attention to two portions first of all settling time you can see the settling performance is about equivalent to each other got it wow and how about this one similar uh, but, but no detail right because after that you can see a almost a flat line here if you zoom in this you can still see some kind of ripples okay but they are similar to each other so first of all two major issues before your real design I recommend I strongly recommend you to do such kind of behavior simulation first of all to check how much the settling time is okay even though 
they are not equivalently, they are not uh, exactly equivalent, but to the order, for example, you need to set up on in millisecond, and after simulation, you get 10 milliseconds, then forget about it. The settling time is too long. Okay? Okay? And then, the second is the most important one. Whether or not the whole circuit will be stabilized. How to do such kind of judgment? You focus on this. If after behavior simulation, the V bias, I mean the input for your VCO, look like this. Okay, it means what? It oscillates already. It is unstable. Then the overall circuit is totally wrong. You need to modify all the parameters. All the param parameters here. Okay? Whoa, okay, all of them. Redo the behavior simulation. And finally, you will get, first of all, no oscillation here, stabilized. And then the transient is not too long. That's it. After that, do the circuit simulation. Okay? It will save you a lot of time. That is my final recommendation for PLR. Okay, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, you get good enough fundamental understanding about PLR design. Okay, and for detail, just read the slides by yourself. And then go to the final stage. We need to, everybody get the papers, right? That's it? No? 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 No paper? No? Oh, okay, anyway, please pay attention to the emails about TA. I, I will discuss with TA because long, long time ago, I asked the TA to prepare a uh, ultra low power circuit for you to study. Okay? Yeah. If you don't, if you didn't get the papers, <laughs> I need to think how to how to how to make it. All right. So so please pay attention to our e-board, the Muto or something, or your uh, emails. Please please read your emails or have a look at the Muto announcement. Oh, 请你们一定要收 email 或者是看那个 Muto 里面的那个商界的公告，好吧？好，我也再跟 TA 讨论一下。Okay. Anyway. Thanks for coming. This is the end of uh, the whole the class for whole semester.